boys and girls, can you see me? All right, man, I'm uh, getting ready to go for a run here. This is where I go. It's a nice park. And the thing I like about this park is those hills. You got one, two, three hills. And you get going up and down those, man, it's the best little workout you can imagine. With my phone, they don't look that big, but they're, they're pretty good size hills. Uh, anyway, you get to go around the park. There's a nice creek over there you can actually go fishing in. So it's a nice little spot. That's why I need to get down to Florida, guys. Let me roll this window up before the mosquitoes get in here. But that's why I need to get down to Florida because every year I get going. And, you know, every year I'm sitting on my butt all winter and then I get going and running and working out in the springtime and the summer. And then it's just, it keeps getting harder and harder the older I get. So that's why I need to get to a spot where it's nice and warm where I can get going and keep going all year round. Okay, you guys understand that. Well, now you do. Anyway, man, before I get running here, uh, I I want to do a video. Okay, you guys ready? Good. Last night I had a dream, and my boy was with some girl, and I was in the dream, and it just went from one thing to the next. But the overall scheme of the dream was he was going to marry this girl, but then things started falling apart, and it just went from one bad thing to the next. And at the end of the dream, I ended up grabbing this girl and telling her, look, you know, you got to make a decision in your life on, you know, what you're going to do here. Is this what you want? I mean, is this the path you want to take? You got to make a decision before you jump in, before you dive in and, you know, do it. Okay. So anyway, guys, for some reason, God is leading me to make this video. Maybe one person out of a million down there, God will send my way before they get married and they're going to watch this video and it may help them a little bit. Okay. Now, wouldn't it be great if all of us growing up before we got out of high school that we saw videos about drug use and about being, you know, getting caught drinking and driving and things and being in marriage and having kids, having sex before marriage, having sex with your girlfriend, and all of a sudden she's pregnant. What's going to happen then? Because these are the things, guys, that we get into when we're growing up as teenagers that we have no comprehension of what we're getting into. Okay, I want to go have sex with this girl. Well, the next thing I know, she's pregnant. Guess what? I got a kid on the way. Uh, I have no idea. I'm clueless about what's, what's about to happen in my life. Okay, so just imagine if all these kids were educated about what is going to happen if, if they go down this road or if they go down that road or if they go down this road. Okay, what a difference it would make for this, this community, for this world, you know, if, if they actually... You know, but Satan doesn't want you to be educated, okay? We're, and again, guys, I'm going to make this video. This is for Christians, and this is for normal people. Uh, I said that wrong, okay? It's acting like Christians aren't normal. Well, we're not normal. We're, we're apart from this world. We think differently, okay? We don't think like most of the world. So, yeah, we are a little bit odd, okay? This is for the average person. This is for Christians, okay? So, just imagine, again... Uh, what difference it would make if we all had this information to begin with, okay? Before we made these life-changing decisions and how it could affect us. And again, most most of these kids are young. They're you know again they're, they're jumping into something. They have no idea how it's going to affect their life, and it may destroy their life. And again, this is what Satan wants. This is a world we live in. He does not want you to be educated, to have an understanding of what's going to happen if you make this choice or if you make that choice. Okay, me for example, when I got married, I met this girl in a bar. We had sex. Next thing I know, she's pregnant. Next thing I know, I'm getting married. Next thing I know, I have to buy a house. Next thing I know, I got kids. Um, and so you learn as you go. But nine times out of ten, that could end up in disaster. Why? Because you have no idea what you're getting into. I had no idea, you know, that I would have to, you know, marry this woman because now I got kids. Now I got her pregnant. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going into new territory here. Totally unprepared. You know, hopefully I got a job. All these kids out here getting girls pregnant. They don't have a job. Oh my God. What a mess we're living in. And what a satanic mess we're living in. Okay. So anyway, guys, allow me to make a quick video. And I'm going to make a few points that, that might help somebody out down the line. Okay, first things first. When I got married, I'm going to give you a couple things. 
Uh, I was into porn. I believed in God at that time, believe it or not. But I was also, the computers first started coming out. That's how old I am. Uh, and pornography. Okay, so here I am. I'm getting into pornography. And unaware of how that would affect my wife. Okay? She hated it, and rightfully so. And for me, it made no difference. Well, I'm just a guy. I'm looking at other naked women. No big deal. I, that's what men do. You know, no big deal. I was doing that before. And, you know, it's just, I, I know it's probably wrong in God's eyes, but it wasn't a big deal. And, you know, it's just whatever. But anyway, guys, for Christians, I'm going to tell you one thing. Put God first. This is for the Christians that are getting married. You put God first in your life. What does that mean? Okay, put, put God first in your marriage. What does that mean? That means you do not lie. You do not cheat. You do not steal. You... You know, pornography, which would be forbidden by God, stay out of it, okay? Why? Because that's going to cause a problem. Satan knows it, God knows it, and you had better know it. Um, do not lie, okay? That's one of the commandments. So in other words, guys, if you got a woman or a man, and they start lying to each other, even little lies, say, say the woman goes down to a grocery store, and she tells her husband, well, I went, you know, instead she goes out shopping, instead she lied to him, and he finds out, now... We're in a situation where she just, you know, a little bitty lie turns into something that could cause a divorce because now he don't trust her. Same thing with the women, with the guys. Okay, guys, if you tell her a lie, okay, one little lie for one little thing, one time, and now you've broken that trust. Okay, so that may cause a divorce down the line. See, see what you've done? Okay, you've gone against God. God says, do not lie. And there you go, you're lying in your marriage and it may cause a divorce, okay? So take that into consideration. What about your lifestyles? Okay, so say that the woman, before they get married, she likes to go to the opera, she likes to do this, she likes to do that, and the guy, he likes to go fishing, he likes to go hunting, and then all of a sudden you get married and the woman says, well, no, you're not gonna do that no more. The guy says, oh no, you're not gonna do that no more. Okay, now you got problems. Okay, you cannot control the other person like a robot, you got to let them live their lifestyle like they used to. But if this person or that person was going out to the bars and drinking where you met to begin with, okay, you're going to have problems because you go to the bars, you're drinking, you're getting drunk, you're chasing women, uh, alcohol, antichrist, drugs, antichrist. Okay. If you guys are into that type of lifestyle, you're going to have problems. Okay. That's all there is to it. If you're into drugs, if you're into alcohol, if you're into the stuff, there's a lot of things. This is why you're supposed to follow God and put God in between your marriage because now you're getting rid of the stuff that's going to cause you problems down the road. Okay. Whether it be porn, whether it be getting drunk and getting high and being on drugs and doing stupid stuff that you used to do when you were an idiot, when you were an idiot like me, uh, things, there's certain things that got to be thrown out in the trash and that's all there is to it. Okay, let's see. And now, like I say, and now that you are married, let's say you're going to have kids. Now you got a house. Now we're getting into the money. Okay, so now you got a kids, you got a house. Okay, let's say this guy or this woman. Now you got more responsibility. So if the guy used to like to go fishing every other day, guess what? Now you got kids. So you're going to have to take take responsibility. You're going to have to make decisions. Take care of those kids. Take care of that house. Stay working every day. Make your money. Make your paycheck. And take care of those kids. Now, with all that said, guys, I'm going to get into what we call a state marriage license. Okay? I think I made all the points that I need to make. And, you know, you don't have to take a six-month class here. I'm going, to, I'm going to do all this in about 10, 15 minutes, and I'm done. One more point, and I think I am done. Okay, now, state marriage license for all you Christians out there mostly because most of the worldly people, they're still going to go and they're going to get their, their they're going to have their wedding and their big wedding and invite all their guests and they're going to get a state marriage license. Now, why does the state want to be involved in your marriage? Because there's money in it. Okay, they get money to begin with and then when they know that the divorce rate is so high that they're going to make a ton of money when you go through a divorce. Okay, trust me on this. Trust me, trust me, trust me. And let me explain real quick. Okay, now, Christians, when you get married, you find a Bible, both of you, and you put your hand on that Bible, and you get married before God. You don't need a state marriage license. Okay? 
Nowhere in the Bible, nowhere 2,000 years ago, did they have to get married by the state. That's not how it worked. When you found a mate, you got married, you both, you both put, you know, you looked up to God, you put your hand on a Bible, and you are then married before God. Okay, now you're married. Don't get that wrong. Okay, so guys, if you two get a divorce down the line, you got kids, okay, you're going to take care of those kids. Mother, you're going to take care of those kids. You're both going to take care of those kids financially or whatever it takes. Okay, I don't agree with the fact that some of these guys make, let's say, $10 million a year and the woman demands that he gives him, uh, gives her $9 million to take care of two kids. No, 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 no. Okay, that's how the, that's how the worldly system works. Okay, I don't agree with that. It's all about taking care of those kids and they don't need $9 million for survival. Okay, really. So anyway, guys, Christians, who I'm talking to, once you get married before God, if you ended up getting a divorce, okay, now you have to take care of those kids if you have kids. And if you don't, okay, now, now you're going to be held responsible by God and you're going to be in trouble. Remember that. Remember I told you that. Okay, so you're going to do the right thing. Now, for those of you who get married by the state, if you go through a divorce, here's what's going to happen. The counselors, the mediators, the lawyers, the judges, and whoever else, state's attorney, even if they get involved or depending on how bad it gets, uh, they're there. They're put in place by Satan. Okay. They are there to destroy your family. They're not there to keep your marriage together. There's no money in it. Okay. That is not how it works. Uh, the lawyers are there for your money, and let's say you got, uh, whatever, uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars in the bank for your kid's college, they want that money and they'll get it, okay? Every last penny, what they're going to do is they're going to get both of you and your wife together, and they're going to make you guys, they're going to get you guys fighting so that the divorce is dragged out, and pretty soon the lawyers are going to have all that money in the bank before you know it. Before you can blink your eye, all that money's going to be gone, and then they get your, you know, the house and the cars. You name it, man. They're going to get as much as they can. That's how That's how they make their money. That's how the state, they sit down and they realize that we can pass these laws. We can do these things. And in that process, we can make a shit ton of money. And this is how they work it. Okay, believe me. The uh, Supposedly, the uh, college-educated counselors and the lawyers and all these people in between, they're nothing but a bunch of crooks and criminals. I've been through it. I've seen it. I've lived it. Uh, trust me, trust me, trust me one more time. Uh, it's it's satanic. Trust me. It's just uh, they all all they want is your money, and in the end, your family will most likely be destroyed. And these 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 blood sucking varmints, demons, are going to have all your cash. That's how it works. That's how the system plays out. Again, they're not they're not in for it to keep your marriage together, to keep your family together. Okay, before you know, it, they're going to get you, they're going to get you two fighting. And I I'm not even going to go into details about what happened in my marriage. But anyway, guys, um, I think that's about it. You know, I think I have made my points. I think that's, uh, I don't want to ramble on here too much. I got to get out here and go for my run. Um, that is it. Okay, I think I said enough. So everybody, peace out. Take care. God bless and have a great day. Amen.